Francis Louisa Bushnell by Charles Dudley Warner. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Bruce Kachuk. Francis Louisa Bushnell by Charles Dudley Warner. This collection of the occasional poems of Francis Louisa Bushnell gives the fitting opportunity for a word upon the character and work of one who was long prominent in the intellectual and social life of Hartford. The place she occupied cannot be filled, but while to those who knew her well her loss is irreparable, her memory will always have in it something of inspiration. Miss Bushnell had intellectual capacities which would have given her a considerable place in literature if her ambition had equaled her ability but she shrank from notoriety and seemed quite content to exercise her wit and her singular powers in the immediate circle in which she was thrown she was a true poet she wrote or at least published a very small amount of verse yet this was of a pure and high quality she had the delicacy of fancy and the sudden gleam of imaginative insight into the world about her that if exercised to any extent would have given her a high position among poets from her father she inherited great verbal facility words to him were things so vital that they were able to express the most subtle thought and this power of expression which is rare and goes only with the power of thinking clearly always characterized miss bushnell's language spoken or written it was an intellectual gift with dr bushnell and perhaps to a lesser degree with his daughter but it seemed to have a spiritual quality besides she not only resembled her father in this respect but also in the fact that she was accustomed to think for herself one meets only now and then one whose opinion on any book or person or event excites any interest for the reason that the opinion is usually borrowed from somebody else and in these days commonly from the newspapers miss bushnell thought out things for herself and consequently whatever she said had the merit of originality and individuality and after all whatever of value any one's talk or writing has apart from its being a matter of information depends upon the personal quality another trait of miss bushnell was her quickness of mind i have known but two or three other persons whose mental process was so rapid whose perceptions were so keen and whose power of assimilation was so ready in conversation she seemed to apprehend what her companion was expressing by a sort of intuition and to grasp the whole before the sentence was finished so that her reply always came with lightning-like rapidity this gave her tremendous power of repartee and a directness and finish to her wit that was very remarkable miss bushnell also had a very just mind i speak of this rather as an intellectual than a moral quality for it made her see things as they are and real perspicacity is justness added to this purely intellectual quality she had also the sympathetic gift of humour developed rather highly in the direction of ability to see the incongruous and ridiculous side of things a power which gave great keenness to her remarks but always ended in merriment rather than in ridicule this means to say that her critical faculty was highly developed she had high standards in literature as well as elsewhere was exceedingly fastidious in her tastes and this may partially account for the fact that she wrote so little poetry for she would be her own severest critic in this way in dr bushnell the notable quality was the union of intellectual and spiritual perception this miss bushnell inherited but she added to it something of the charm of her sex the alertness vivacity and gracefulness of mind which made her seem to those who knew her best almost like one of shelley's ethereal creations a being compounded of fire and spirit this ethereal quality however involved no instability for with this lightness and grace went also great precision and justness and a will-power that was very pronounced in regard to conduct as well as control of her faculties her rare common sense was also a saving quality in her intellectual brilliancy she never surrendered her reason and could see in religion as well as in life what is essential and what is extraneous or accidental or merely the creation of human superstition her spiritual perceptions were as clear as her intellectual and she never doubted either the justice of god or the absolute love made manifest in the redeemer of the world 
i mention this because it is not always that so much humour and wit and gaiety and intellectual keenness are accompanied by such high spiritual insight and real humility of spirit charles dudley warner end of introduction world music by francis louisa bushnell read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. World Music Jubilant the music through the fields are ringing, Carol, warble, whistle, pipe, Endless ways of singing, Oriole, bobolink, melody of thrushes, Rustling trees, hum of bees, Sudden little hushes, Broken suddenly again, Carol, whistle, rustle, humming, in reiterate refrain thither hither going coming while the streamlet softer voices mingle murmurously together gurgle whisper lapses splashes praise of love and summer weather hark a music finer on the air is blowing throbs of infinite content sounds of things a-growing secret sounds flit of bird under leafy cover odors shy floating by clouds blown swiftly over kisses of the crimson roses crossings of the lily lances stirrings when a bud uncloses tripping sun in shadow dances murmur of aerial tides stealthy zephyrs gliding and a thousand nameless things sweeter for their hiding ah a music more than these floweth on forever in and out yet all beyond our tracing or endeavour far though clear strange though near sweet with a profounder sweetness mystical rhythmical weaving all into completeness for its wide harmonious measures not one earthly note let fall sorrows raptures pains and pleasures all in it and it in all of earth's music the ennobler of its discord the refiner pipe of pan was once its naming now it hath a name diviner and a poem this recording is in the public domain changed by francis louisa bushnell read for librivox dot org by nemo changed fair is the night ay fair and deep the moonlight drowns the veil my eyes are heavy but not with sleep and the night moth droops her sail there's not so much as a sigh in the air the stars are ghostly and few and silver pale are the meadows where so coldly drops the dew but the haunting shadows are never still they wander all night alone and the sleepless insects drone and shrill in a lonely monotone ah long ago was a summer night like this and yet other far for the moonlight flowed and the air hung light and happy was every star the dew that night was a blissful balm and seemed on the heart to fall the calm was an overflowing calm and love was the life of all then piping choir shrilled high as now but hushed is the sylvan flute of the nightingale that dreamed on the bough and a tender music is mute tis the same save that and yet all is strange as the soul of the night were fled yes i look and look but can see no change except that my world is dead end a poem this recording is in the public domain in the dark by francis louisa bushnell read for librivox dot org by nemo in the dark restless tonight and ill at ease and finding every place too straight i leave the porch shut in with trees and wander through the garden gate so dark at first i have to feel my way before me with my hands but soul-like fragrances reveal 
my virgin daphne where she stands her stars of blossoms breathe aloft her worship to the stars above in wavering pulsation soft climbs the sweet incense of her love those far celestial eyes can dart their glances down through leafy bars the spark that burns within her heart was dropped in answer from the stars she does not find the space too small the night too dark for sweetest bloom content within the garden wall since upward there is always room her spotless heart through all the night holds safe its little vestal spark o oh, blessed if the soul be white to breathe and blossom in the dark end of poem this recording is in the public domain Unfulfillment by Francis Louisa Bushnell. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Unfulfillment. Ah, June is here, but where is May? That lovely, shadowy thing, fair promiser of fairer day, that made my fancy stretch her wing in hope begetting spring. The space is vague, the luminous veil the drift of bloom and scent those dreamy longing setting sail that knew not asked not where they went ah was this all they meant this day that lets me dream no more this bright unshadowed round on some illimitable shore the harbour whither those were bound leith nor yet is found end a poem this recording is in the public domain out of season by francis louisa bushnell read for librivox dot org by nemo out of season a strange thing happened down our way last fall the apple trees put out their pretty blossoms just like may and scattered all their pink about it gave my tough old soul a start just as you've seen a warmish breeze come loitering out of summer's heart and rock and fan the gray old trees and twasn't but a day or two before i got another shove at hearing that old samuel drew had gone and got at last in love if the old wreck down off the cape that years ago one night capsized had floated in in gallant shape i should have not been more surprised but dear me if the apple trees when summer's past bloom out again and sweeten every passing breeze why what can you expect of men a few late birds up there above keep calling down there's hope for all when gray old hearts grow green with love and fruit trees blossom in the fall at any rate one thing is plain that it is quite worth while to wait since not to trees nor yet to men does heaven like to say too late end a poem this recording is in the public domain out of the old the new by francis louisa bushnell read for librivox dot org by nemo out of the old the new how strange the knot in springtime fair when gentle winds run to and fro but trembling in the frosty air the new year blossoms on the snow that knot in morning's lovely bloom with silver chimes and merry din but slowly through the midnight gloom the great bell swings the new year in ah life and death ah gain and loss and smiles and eyes that tears bedew love with its pain heaven through a cross tis ever thus our years grow new end of poem this recording is in the public domain the mountain's meadow by francis louisa bushnell read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Mountain's Meadow 
meadow lying far below me green between the silver birches does the little streamlet know thee that thy verdure softly searches ever where it listeth gliding idling through thy bright expanses dark behind the alders hiding in the noon's delicious trances through the honeyed clover creeping drinking sweetness without measure mid thy reedy grasses sleeping over full of easy pleasure knowing all thy sunny spaces all thy blossoms breathing sweetly all thy cool and hidden places could it know thee more completely ah none ever won by dreaming secret such as thine fair meadow but the mountains heavenward gleaming touch and know thee with their shadow they have soared into the wonder of the noon with giant daring to the heat the storm the thunder each its mighty forehead bearing now that long endurance over in their glorious leisure leaning grandly down they may discover something of thy deepest meaning thou art coolness after burning thou art fullness after bareness sweet possession after yearning after storms and open fairness thou art stillness after striving crowned rest to high endeavour after anguish deep reviving after death the calm forever end a poem this recording is in the public domain outside by francis louisa bushnell read for librivox dot org by nemo outside down the dark the snow is whirling driven blindly through the gloom all its white is lost to-night as some unseen force were hurling sinking it to hidden doom and the snow in vain in vain flutters upward in its pain it will fall to earth and stain impulse flutter wavering fall i alas have known them all drop my little trembling light lost the lustre of my white find no longer rest or goal for my tired feet or soul in a cloud of blind despair turn as gladly here as there in yon firelight brightly gleaming little phantoms rosy red turn and meet with dancing feet ah the vision sets me dreaming till i wish that i were dead of a child that years ago danced within the heartsome glow light and pure as flake of snow and this pictured shadow dance seems the childhood seen in trance dancer sweet you look divine to these darkened eyes of mine and i gaze upon you even as an outcast into heaven so will shadowy splendors fall far outside the jasper wall hark the vesper bells are ringing in the minister's solemn height come they say o come and pray through the great door slowly swinging twixt the darkness and the light i can see the white-robed choir and the candles chastened fire up the arches pale aspire and the sculptured angel stand holding out his stainless hand should i to the altar steal kneel where happy maidens kneel like that one with upturned face meeting heaven's descending grace hands crossed peaceful on her breast in a calm a prayerful rest would her peace encircle me would her freedom set me free no fair saint the peace is thine and the dark despair is mine ah these souls in harbour lying anchored on a shelter tide only know life's even flow little wreck of storms wild flying or of waves that beat outside stainless hand but nerveless arm cannot snatch a soul from harm or make hearts benumbed grow warm lord thy purity is strong reaching to the cure of wrong search yea rend my heart and soul if such sharpness can make whole or if far too low i stand for the dealing of thy hand must i then be left outside o oh my god 
thy heavens are wide send some angel pure and fleet let him lift me to thy feet there abased and dumb to kneel still contented might i feel that in some poor place apart i was not outside thy heart something whispers to my fear can it be that thou art near are thy feet here in the snow wounded for me long ago let me clasp them lying low i have found the open door and am left outside no more end of poem this recording is in the public domain midsummer by francis louisa bushnell read for LibriVox.org by phone the summer floats on even wing nor sails more far nor draws more near poised calm between the budding spring and sweet decadence of the year in shadowed fields the cattle stand the dreaming river scarcely flows the sky hangs cloudless o'er the land and nothing comes and nothing goes a pause of fullness set between the sowing and the reaping time what is to be and what has been joined each to each in perfect rhyme so comes high noon twixt morn and eve so comes full tide twixt ebb and flow or midnight twixt the day we leave and that new day to which we go full fruitful hours by growing one a restful space mid old and new when all there was to do is done and nothing yet there is to do no days like these so deeply blessed that look not backward nor before their large fulfilment ample rest make life flow wider evermore End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Once Upon a Chime by Frances Louisa Bushnell Read for LibriVox.org by phone Once upon a time, life lay before me, fresh as a story untold. Now so many years have travelled o'er me, I and my story are old. Once upon a time, my locks fell flowing, brown as yours and as bright now so many winters coming and going have left him you see snow white once upon a time i too had a lover gallant and full of grace now do you think dear you can discover him in grandpapa's face once upon a time i thought it living only to draw my breath now i've learned that it means a striving sometimes even to death once upon a time I fell to weeping, if but my wish was crossed. Now I can trust to a better keeping, even if all seem lost. Once upon a time it looked so dreary, ever to wait and rest. Now at last I'm a little weary, resting a while seems best. Waiting a while till the great tomorrow over the hilltops climb. Joy is forever, thank God, dear, that sorrow only is once upon a time. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Child's Star by Frances Louisa Bushnell Read for LibriVox.org by phone The Christmas night fell softly down And closed the crimson west, And lighting on the snow-clad town Dropped peace upon its breast. A happy party, homeward bound, Drove down the lighted street, their horses skimmed the ivory ground with swift and dainty feet. The tinkling sleigh bell spurred her pace, the downy firs were heaped, and from its nest a little face with winter roses peeped. The sparkling crescent in the sky swung on its silver rim, and as the child flew quickly by, it seemed to fly with him. Oh, see that pretty star! And thus his growing thought did come. Mama, it's going home with us! It's going to its home. Oh, happy child, your words went far, yes, farther than you guessed, and high upon the hornet star you hung a fancy blessed. Long, long ago some pilgrims had the thought that pleases you, and all the world tonight is glad because the thought was true. And when, dear boy, your fancy sweet to certainties have grown, you'll reach the star that leads your feet, nor find the fancy flown. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Year's Colors by Frances Louisa Bushnell. Read for LibriVox.org by phone. Rosy, rosy, broke the year, ruby red and ruby clear, flushed carnation through the sky, flamed its joy up zenith high, bloomed above the spotless snows, opening as a splendid rose in among the lilies blows. For the snow lay lily pure, and the snow lay marble still, with a stainless heart secure from the passions that would fill all the earth and all the sky red 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 it mantled high red 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 it drooped down low but it could not stain the snow looking up the crimson height looking down to perfect white flame of sky and calm of snow seemed to mingle in the glow kindling hopes and holy fire all that draws our spirits higher all to which our souls aspire chastened by a will serene fit for waiting even long and a heart all pure and clean angel pure and angel strong down the years blessed colours shine of their glow and calm the sign promise of a far-off light warm with red and pure with white end of poem this recording is in the public domain absence by francis louisa bushnell read for librivox dot org by phone through azure realms of loneliness sails the hot sun no cloudy fleet can voice him over the trackless waste or cools his path with snowy sleep be calmed upon the tropic deep or scuds by freshening breezes chased dropping swift shadows down to bless and make the sunlight doubly sweet Earth's upturned face is glad no more, expressionless beneath the noon. The listless winds in covert lie, nor hunt in lightsome companies through whispering grain and sighing trees. The sea sends inland no reply to the dumb yearning of the shore, but ebbs away in weary swoon. A bird in yonder thicket sings, and if so be his song tells true, in miles and miles the only bird for ne'er such plaintive monotone of heart companionless and lone was in a summer noontide heard tight folded are his useless wings his mate is lost beyond the blue gone is the nameless charm that binds the outer world in kinship blessed the interchange the light refrain and twixt our souls that once were near lie leagues of stirless atmosphere asleep upon a silent main Nothing today its heartmate finds, nor any answer to its quest. One kiss of shadow or of air, the world to lovelier life would stir. Or might I clasp that distant hand, then love would grace me for the whole. So light a touch on hand or soul, so light a touch on sea or land, makes all things one and all things fair. Wake, wind, and blow a touch from her. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Peace as a River by Frances Louisa Bushnell Read for LibriVox.org by phone Why ask for joy's tumultuous thrill That suffers no increase? Better the motions sure and still Of ever-deepening peace. Better to dwell with lowly things, and with their growth to grow, To feel within those secret springs that gather cool and slow. Born of such stillness wells the brook, and leafy closet dim, Till the full silence of the nook o'erflows into a hymn. The little singer trips along in musical content, But ever gains a fuller song, and learns its own intent. Gladly it spends its tuneful grace in hidden minstrelsy, nor asks as yet a wider space but just to sing and be. In simple service thrives its heart, it waters flowerets shy, it feels the spotted fish's dart, it mirrors bits of sky, till, slipping down by hillside farms, its ministries enlarge, and in the meadow's circling arms it wins a broader marge. White lilies anchor on its breast, 
a boat glides softly through and ever deeper grows its rest the more it has to do for in its task it knows no haste nor lets the music cease too free to keep too calm to waste the largest of its peace but bears on it to outstretched lands where thirsty cities wait and then at length it understands the fullness of its fate proud ships upon its bosom ride it throbs with busy oars it grows more nobly satisfied between its widening shores it gathers strength and majesty yet flows with rhythmic ease and the great gladness of the sea completes its garnered peace better dear peace thou art the best for where thou hast thy home full grows the service deep the rest and joy herself shall come end of poem this recording is in the public domain the pilgrim's reverie by francis louisa bushnell read for LibriVox.org by phone the waning moon shines pale and still the winds in russet branches die day faints upon the darkening hill and melts into the days gone by the vanished days now dim and far yet none so dead they cannot wake and stir in me as yon high star quivers deep visioned in the lake they glimmer down the moon's long beam they rustle in the russet tree they fade in twilight's melting dream and slide in starlight down to me i feel the hush of brooding wings the warmth of tender joys far flown and little flights and flutterings of blessings that were once my own but oh most sweet and oh most sad of all these lost delights that thrill the blessings that i almost had but life can never more fulfil and yet tis strange but these are more my own to-night than all beside glad stars upon a distant shore that draw my sails across the tide fade golden evenings fade and sink burn crimson leaves burn out and fall for life is other than we think and death the surest life of all End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Twilight by Francis Louisa Bushnell. Read for LibriVox.org by Leah Autry. A weary, vague and glimmering lies the land where twilight, like a nun in vesture gray, comes with a flickering taper in her hand, whose pale and spiritual ray lights face and breast fainter and fainter grows the upward light and deeper creeps the darkness round her feet while all across the world she leads the night and shuts the day that was so sweet behind the west alas for she has left me in the arms of night who holds me in a prison cell begirt with dark and shadowy alarms i pray for light whose sword can fell these phantom foes at last there come faint shinings through the veil as if behind it had been born a star the dead horizon grows a circlet pale and out beyond the world more far blossoms a rose end of poem this recording is in the public domain the rift of gold by francis louisa bushnell recorded for LibriVox.org by jude dark clouds the heavenly blue enfold but on the sunset rifted lie and frame with rim of shining gold a width of open sky it hangs an outlook calm and blest a broad unhindered upward way to warmer realms and lands of rest mid waveless floods of day we reach far out beyond the rift and long to follow or to hold but eastward whirls the ceaseless drift to depths of night and cold yet souls fly out and up so far they have no need of earthly light or flame of heaven enkindled star to solace darkest night past sun and stars in deeps behind these trailing clouds and lower cold 
may he who looks forever find the open rift of gold. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. New Year's Eve by Francis Louisa Bushnell Read for LibriVox.org by Leah Autry July 29, 2018 St. Louis, Missouri How old our planet looks tonight, the hoary landscape blind and bare, the heavy labor of the air, the dying breath, the dying light. What if the year were really new, and this time-weary world of ours, made freshly fair as Eden's bowers, were newly launched upon the blue? What if this way-worn human race, clean from its sweat, its dust and grime, might cool its steps in morning prime, and feel the dawn upon its face? And what if I among the rest, new waking on a sunrise shore, might see the opening day before, with life unblossomed in my breast? Ah, it were but an empty boon unless the new arise within, since all renewals that begin outside the heart grow old so soon. Forever old is he, and blind, whose feet pass through some open door that leads to newer days before, yet leave his laggard soul behind. Oh, rather may the soul come to, when life through gates of change is drawn. If that but feel the touch of dawn, then will the year be really new. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Margaret by Frances Louisa Bushnell. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Jude. Through the fields with morning wet, gaily wandered Margaret. Not a shadow darkening yet. Eyes new filled with violet. Just a blithersome lass. Light of heart and light of tread following where the pathway led spinning out its little thread in the meadow grass as she lightly tripped along humming to herself a song from a heart unstung by wrong gossamer fancies free to throng through her cloudless breast troops of daisies left and right answering back her fresh delight closer swung their fringes white around their rosy guest she plucked one idly as she went and half for jest and half intent all her simple lore she spent trying what her fortune meant on its snowy ring with the charm each maiden tries ever with a new surprise listening to those soft replies that the daisies bring first he loves me whispered low then he loves me not and so back and forth and to and fro all around the milk-white row the fairy wheel of fate wide the airy leaflets blew while her fingers swiftly flew ravelling out the slender clue to her heart's estate ending thus the little spell on he loves me not it fell but merry as a marriage bell rang her voice dear flower pray tell why so cruel art careless fancies lightly blow spread their wings and come and go when the door stands open so in the happy heart end of poem this recording is in the public domain without a word by francis louisa bushnell read for LibriVox.org by phone in the light keeping of the air trembles a secret all things tell the very wind that lifts your hair in lands of heat hath learned it well whispers it soft against your cheek breathes it in passion laden sigh so warm so nigh it has no need a word to speak with fluttering hearts the birds outpour the open secrets all day long now they confess and now implore in the strange mystery of song which seems to utter everything yet leaves the sweetest things inferred 
without a word o birds no wonder that you sing and even the silence of earth's breast tells it in language still and fine and grows too full to be suppressed reaches these flowers up for a sign oh for some perfect sign to tell what words too rudely might declare some voice of air soft as the whisper of the shell yet the dumb heart can tell thee more it speaks to thee with every beat and what it urges o'er and o'er words were less daring to entreat yes when that speaks is all avowed all that i bade my lips conceal that will reveal without a word and speak it loud end of poem this recording is in the public domain in disguise by francis louisa bushnell read for librivox org by phone your face possessed me while we talked it seemed the picture of a heart in whose fair garden sorrow walked while joy poor errand stood apart a suppliant at the gate you do not dream that she is near so still she waited and so shy you were not thinking of her dear almost you have forgot to sigh she comes no more of late i know i know she longs to come and lift the latch with quick surprise and yet she standeth strange and dumb and looks behind a still disguise as one you never knew but if she came with smile and dance with banners flying music gay oh would you run with answering glance or only turn your head away from what was not for you i understand you need not speak the heart that is for sorrow strong for joy too joyful were too weak she must not come with dance and song but lightly as a dove tis thus she comes and makes no claim she whispers soft she kneeleth low and wears the while a gentler name oh hear me breathe it must she go the name she wears is love end of poem this recording is in the public domain the game of loss by francis louisa bushnell read for librivox org by phone i know a heart that sits upon its throne yet makes its kingdom poorer day by day a queen unblessed in that it blesses none and far too poor to give itself away and one i know hath all its sweetness given a flower left empty by the thankless air yet in the losing finds its only heaven fed by the fountains of divine repair who then shall weigh our wealth against our dearth where's the justice fine of sight and touch so light the things we dream have dearest worth and those we hold for nothings worth so much how shall i dare then for this joy to pray lest when it come it prove a grievous loss or how implore that grief may pass away lest thus i spurn a flower-bearing cross o oh, blessed tears that cleanse the eyes from morn o oh, costly gains wherein are all we lose o oh, rose of peace so white with many a thorn choose thou my heart be strong at last and choose not yet not yet i cannot ask for pain and dare not ask the joy that blindeth me i cannot choose my father i would fain ask thee for that which looks like joy to thee End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The New Day by Francis Louisa Bushnell Read for LibriVox.org by phone Silent has been the night, and oh so long, With weary moon forever sailing west, Save that a bird at midnight thrilled a song, A dream of daylight from his moonlit nest, the hills lay couched in slumber range on range the earth was floating in a silver web that mystery of calm before a change that lull of waters at the lowest ebb some drowsy notes were all the bird could sing soft as the scattered drops of summer dew then hushed within the quiet of his wing he sang no more but now the dream comes true a thrill runs through the spaces of the night 
and flutters on the wavy eastern line beyond the stars dilates a distant light the luminous outflow of a day divine with slow approach it deepens into bloom faint jasmine yellow with a flush of rose and brightening till it makes the stars a gloom o'er all the long uncertainty it flows what though the perfect day is yet unborn sweet were the caroled vision of the bird glad are the tidal colours of the morn and heaven is pledged without a single word the waves of light are breaking on the shore pulsing in cadence to a mightier flow the strong uplift of nobler hopes before the great new future rising in the glow above the hills surges the day at last the longed-for day effulgent high and wide turn turn grey earth and leave the darkened past and swing thyself upon the incoming tide end of poem this recording is in the public domain two and one by francis louisa bushnell read for librivox dot org by phone one vesper vanishing sun delay delay linger a little over the past sing sleepy birds keep back the day from whiling away so fast vesper bell ringing slow and sweet ring me the story of days that die soon shalt thou peal more loud and fleet the bliss of a day drawn nigh can there be two hearts in my breast one that fast enough to the old bow clings one that flies to the new-made nest and folds its fluttering wings could not life stand still where it is would that indeed i had hearts for two but oh if i had they would both be his so what my heart can you do two Ravelli. The stars have all winked themselves out, and the moon has slipped under the hill. A swift little wind rushes gaily about, and will not leave anything still. And my heart and my pulses all beat, and chime to the throb of the drum, that calls me quick, leaping once more to my feet, for the jubilant morning has come. It is for my dawn that I care, oh, not for the day dawn alone rise rise happy sun for the day must be fair that makes her for ever my own the moon will come up from the hill and the stars will all gaze as they shine and the winds will all hush and my heart will stand still when she whispers her vow to be mine end of poem this recording is in the public domain the night blossom by Francis Louisa Bushnell, read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Gachuk. While the twilight deepens on garden walk and bed, the flower is slow unfurling its sails of snowy white, freighted with odors, lightly moored by a crimson thread, swaying and floating on the rising tide of night in the twilight's soft glimmer with a tremulous shimmer swinging to and fro it shines ethereally bright why then o oh, thou sweeter flower virgin white and fair deep within thy stainless breast dost fold thyself away is it that thy tender soul unveiling cannot bear in its pure seclusion feels the sweetness of delay in the twilight half hidden let me gaze unforbidden shine upon me lily heart by evening's silver ray close those searching eyes bright stars moon more softly shine while my vestal flower lets all her sacred sweetness flow to my reverent heart unveils her spirit's radiant shrine pure within as fair without its inmost depths are snow 
far heaven of holy brightness conform me to her whiteness lest my soul beside her soul too dark and stained should show End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A May Song by Francis Louisa Bushnell. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Weave high, weave low, thy veil of blossom snow. Yet think not so to blind me gentle may to idly sweet thy wandering breezes blow oh much i fear dear may thou wilt not stay i've known ere now a fairer one than thou sweeter than winds that mid the violets stray my heart was like a nest on flowering bough too like for neither spray nor bird would stay before i knew the bough was broken in two the blossoms withered and bird flew away since then i clasp no hope that is not true and strong enough all way with me to stay no longer clings my heart to dreamful things that breathe and perish in a blossom's day that sing a song or two then spread their wings oh well i know sweet may thou wilt not stay end of poem this recording is in the public domain Homeward by Francis Louisa Bushnell. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. A gallop through the mountain way, with click, click, click against the flint, hard following on the flying day that backward flings a fiery tint. The twilight pines stand dense and grim and sigh and sigh the day is dead the virgin birches tall and slim wave shadowy arms across the red in brooding peace the uplands lie stretched dimly in their evening rest as through their lifted calm i fly on onward to the happy west o oh, west heart red burn close before pale dreamy east float far behind no pause good steed a few miles more in yonder glow our rest we find urgent we reach the downward hill the village darkens far below has aught befallen her of ill my eager heart leaps down to know a swift descent along the ridge through shady glooms and breaks of light a cheery clatter on the bridge then up the street where falls the night across the dark a hearth fire's gleam a graceful shadow on the wall twas false thank god that last night's dream that something evil did befall from out the door a ruddier shine meets vanished daylight's golden trace and starry eyes turned up to mine one light in heaven and home and face end of poem this recording is in the public domain spring in the heart by francis louisa bushnell read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk glad hopes fly down into my waiting heart from yonder world of blue that lets them through 
they come as straight and swift as winged dart but soft and light i trow as bird on bough times there have been when i have all day long gazed wearily aloft for pinion soft nor caught as much as distant note of song or plume drop on my hand from that far land but now the air is gentle with their flight while on soft sailing wing glad news they bring and some fly low and on my heart alight and weave a little nest within my breast it is a simple little song they sing but such as it may be tis sweet to me a song of life renewed and blossoming full waters pastures green and days serene so it must be they find some verdure here some little branch a bloom some brooding room where i had said that all were bare and sere or is it that they see where bloom shall be for best of all they make themselves a place with spreading of their wings the heaven-born things enlarge the heart with motions of their grace and waken blossoms there with tuneful air i must not hold them fast that well i know but stretch out wide and free like some green tree fresh tidings bring they when they come and go and other winged guests to build new nests go fly then little singers as you will and sing your simple song all roads along light on some wayworn hearts and make them thrill so softly it shall seem their inmost dream end of poem this recording is in the public domain june by francis louisa bushnell read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk now the overworld the under clasps in its embrace and the twain so long asunder closely interlace now the sunlight and the shadow keep an endless tryst now the sky the upspringing meadow hath o'erleaned and kissed to the barren bough the flower fair and graceful clings and the long deserted bower feels the stir of wings heart of noon and breath of coolness mingle into one all the longing springs with fullness softly overrun hopes outworn with flight incessant now o'ertake their quest to the weary past the present gives its perfect rest only one thing mars the vision it must vanish soon faint foreshadow of fruition fair and fleeting june end of poem this recording is in the public domain autumn voices by francis louisa bushnell read for LibriVox.org by alan lawley autumn voices the little maid song o oh, happy happy shining day the time to dance and sing and play i wish i only knew why all the clouds have gone to sleep and lie like flocks of lazy sheep far up there on the blue the aster must be glad that nods so cheery too the golden rods wide open is its eye 
and happy is the scarlet vine that runs along the dark green pine as if to reach the sky this afternoon down at the brook a bright-eyed squirrel stopped and took a dozen little drinks some nuts were lying at my feet he looked as if he thought them sweet and gave some knowing winks just then a little leaf quite brown into the brook came rustling down and sailed off like a ship the squirrel gave his tail a whisk then made a funny sideways frisk and left me with a skip there's red and yellow green and pink and purple too it makes me think of joseph's little coat the wood is in a rainbow dressed the hills are like a robin's breast or like my pigeon's throat such pretty colors everywhere such pleasant feelings in the air i'm glad as glad can be here rover come let's take a run and catch a good night from the sun behind the maple tree how sweetly dies the year serenely lapsing to its last repose it flamed with joy when first the end drew near now hushed it sinks into its golden close as hearth fires burning low lie still and glow i hear our little maid sing through the rustling leaves her cheery song her springtime voice rings out so unafraid so like to one that has been silent long i shut my eyes to see if it can be the past looks all a dream i doubt my joys and oh i doubt my grief the shadow mingles strangely with the gleam and all drops from me like a withered leaf blown by celestial wind far far behind now there remains a rest and warmly wrapped within this filmy haze that spreads its yellow net across the west upon the sweet receding year i gaze and feel the tender peace of days that cease slowly the colors burn their glowing hearts must fall to ashen brown and flicker out and into shadows turn but then the gentle snow will flutter down a soft white sleep will fall and cover all that long long quiet sleep that falls upon all death from out the sky heaven tenderly our fallen leaves will keep they do not die they only seem to die so pray i it may be with me with me end of poem this recording is in the public domain the year's goal by francis louisa bushnell read for LibriVox.org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida rest thee a while to-night my soul turn from the dusty road aside nor think to look beyond the goal where dim to-morrow's hide sweet is this wayside resting place upon the margin of the year avail thee then of pilgrim grace and rest a little here lay down thy burden and thy staff breathe deep and free thee of the past stoop to the springs of time and quaff those moments while they last feel the fresh wind that comes from yon blown from a neighboring land unknown yet haste thee not but wait upon a morrow not thine own 
thank god he gives no endless way but lays his hand across the road calls many a halt and bids thee stay and rest thee of thy load he is too full of grace to deal a breathless road that never swerves but all things turn and pause and wheel in restful joyful curves days end and turn where nights begin the months whirl round through snow and glow and lay their lesser rings within the years encircling flow and through these phases manifold round its glad circuit wings the year and links the old the new the old within its clasping sphere and half we feel the sweep of time catch up the years and hurry by but thought falls back too faint to climb the circles of the sky dream if thou wilt of outmost reach the motion of sublimer rounds the flight of hopes surpassing speech and life that knows no bounds but mid these orbits dim and great lose not my soul the years embrace its closeness to thy low estate its needful resting place end of poem this recording is in the public domain the watcher's carol by francis louisa bushnell read for librivox dot org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida high and low to and fro suddenly the bells are ringing sweetest news to mortals bringing though no other sign may show that the blessed morn doth break wake wake for jesus sake far or near soft or clear come no strains of heavenly story mighty choirs and beams of glory singing songs of holy cheer yet the blessed morn doth break wake wake for jesus sake not a star near or far shows the way and golden traces all the stars are in their places very high and still they are yet the blessed morn doth break wake wake for jesus sake child divine thyself the sign other signs we do surrender thou our star of heavenly splendor provest all when thou dost shine wake the blessed morn doth break wake wake for jesus sake end of poem this recording is in the public domain from morn to eve a child's hymn by francis louisa bushnell read for librivox dot org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida the dawning light puts out the night the day arises far and bright awake my heart his praises sing who doth the morning freshness bring awake my heart awake my heart praise him for life and light in work and play the happy day climb swiftly up its shining way then lift my heart thy noonday song praise him who makes the day so strong rejoice my heart rejoice my heart praise him for light and might but when the sun his race has run and all thy work and play is done and stars shine down upon thy nest sing softly then within my breast lie low my heart lie low my heart praise him for night and rest end of poem this recording is in the public domain
The Shadow by Francis Louisa Bushnell. Read for LibriVox.org by Alex McKean. The village churchyard lay in the light of the moon that softly shed, down from the far mid heaven of night, her silver noon on the dead. The elm trees hung their branches down, heavy with night and sleep. The lights were out in the little town, and eyes had forgotten to weep. I stood in a dream like one upcast on some long remembered shore. And there in the moonlight lay my past, and all I had wept of yore. But alas, it was all more strangely far than in thought it had ever been, and that grave seemed nearer to yonder star than to me and more akin. And alas, alas, I had lost my tears, and my heart began to know how relentless are the effacing years, how soon it is long ago. I could not weep, and I could not pray, till the shadow behind the stone began to lengthen away, away, seeking the far unknown. On the grave it laid, and upon my thought, the touch of eternity, it brought what nothing before it brought, a thrill in my tears to me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hidden Joy by Francis Louisa Bushnell Read for LibriVox.org by Caitlin S. Through leafy bypaths, sheltered and apart, Whistling the carol of a careless heart, In the idle gladness strolled a truant boy. Up in a tree top swayed a little bird, And sang and sang, nor cared if any heard His solitary roundelay of joy. A brook flowed through the silence of a wood, Some gorgeous flowers upon its margin stood, and waved their scarlet banners of delight from midnight's dusky blue shone out a star and through the darkness trailed its splendor far though all the world was buried in the night joy asks no seeing eye nor listening ear but carols blooms and shines when none is near only because it feels so fully blessed the mated bird flies not on open wing but sings from out the bough and so i sing the happy secret hidden in my breast end of poem this recording is in the public domain relenting by francis louisa bushnell read for librivox dot org by bruce kachuk the earth is in a melting mood this morning of the year and clasped around by mists that brood she smiles to find herself so wooed with now and then a tear the topmost fastness of the hill has let the winter go the happy-hearted little rill no longer shivers past the mill to meadows hushed with snow the birds let fall their new-born dreams upon me from above and many a shadow wed with beams and many a wind-kissed blossom seems to say a word for love what is there in this tender air to thrill me like a dart it quickens places poor and bare and every covert sweet and fair except one maiden's heart oh are such changeful gleams of light made only to beguile then i am but a foolish wight to be so glad because last night she blessed me with a smile but oh when ice and snow relent and every coldest thing might not perchance one more repent and melting into warm consent flood all my heart with spring end of poem this recording is in the public domain two songs by francis louisa bushnell Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. From the German of Heinrich Heine. One. My heart, my heart is heavy, but gaily 
glances the may i stand and lean on the linden high up on the bastion gray the city's moat below me flows still and blue as the sky a boy on its sleepy current goes fishing and whistling by on the smiling landscape yonder in fairy and motley array are oxen and meadow and woodland and gardens and children at play the maidens at their bleaching on the greensward go and come the mill-wheel scatters jewels i hear its distant hum up on the old grey tower a sentry-box shows brown a tall red-coated fellow goes marching up and down he trifles with his musket that shines in the sunlight red he presents it and he shoulders i wish he would shoot me dead two they have indeed tormented and maddened me with fate some with their love have done it and others with their hate with wine they've mingled poison and with the bread i ate some with their love have done it and others with their hate but she who more than any can torture wound and move is she that does not hate me and yet that does not love End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Christmas Door by Francis Louisa Bushnell. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. All the year long the moon gives light and makes a silver day of night but once a year she seems more near shows every night her steadfast face and fills the sky with tranquil grace tis hard to tell when day is done for day and night flow into one so heaven shines downward all the while and lights us with its constant smile but once a year it draws more near wide open stands the shining door with gleams of light unseen before and all across flash glimpses fleet of upper joys and radiant feet tis ever so since love broke through and down the widening spaces flew that blessed year our lord came near for him swung back the starry bound deepened far up the great profound all heaven swept outward at his birth and naught was narrow but the earth now evermore he stands and waits some lifting of these lower gates but once a year he waits more near shall the blessed door be thrown so wide and only we the entrance hide unbar our hearts make room within and let the holy christmas in end of poem this recording is in the public domain horizon by francis louisa bushnell read for LibriVox.org by bruce Kachuk. my heart gives thanks for yonder hill that makes this valley safe and still that shuts from sight my onward way and sets a limit to my day that keeps my thoughts so tired and weak from seeking 
what they should not seek on that fair bound across the west my eyes find pasturage and rest and of its dewy stillness drink as do the stars upon its brink it shields me from the day to come and makes the present hour my home deeper will be my rest to-night for this near calmness of the height its steadfast boundary will keep my harbored spirit while i sleep yet somewhere on its wooded sides to-morrow's onward pathway hides and i shall wake at early morn to find a world beyond new-born i thank thee lord that thou dost lay these near horizons on my way if i could all my journey see there were no charm of mystery no veiled grief no changes sweet no restful sense of tasks complete i thank thee for the hills the night for every barrier to my sight for every turn that blinds my eyes to coming pain or glad surprise for every bound thou settest nigh to make me look more near more high for mysteries too great to know for everything thou dost not show upon thy limits rests my heart its safe horizon lord thou art end of poem this recording is in the public domain the golden prime by francis louisa bushnell read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk the golden prime of this sweet prince never so fair a may was seen never an evening half so fair then first i knew what may times mean first deeply breathed the vernal air first looked through nature's sylvan screen and saw herself in robe of green the breathing dusk the dreaming sky where with a thousand meanings fraught but all my thoughts were scented by the sweetness of a single thought wide flew my heart yet circled nigh as happy swallows wheel and fly the world for me was newly made and given unto my heart for food and scent and blossom bud and blade were in its waking understood all things the inward mood obeyed for life its spell upon them laid behind the budding sycamore i saw the new moon's golden boat without a sail without an oar adown the leafy lattice float and touch the ether's rosy shore never was moon so new before nor far love's star looked trembling through as if but then it learned to shine and love's first smiles shone heavenly true they were so newly freshly mine and in that hour my soul outgrew itself and found itself anew end of poem this recording is in the public domain delay by francis louisa bushnell read for librivox.org by bruce kachuk taste the sweetness of delaying till the hour shall come for saying that i love you with my soul 
have you never thought your heart finds a something in the part it would miss from out the whole in this rosebud you have given sleeps that perfect rose of heaven that in fancy's garden blows wake it not by touch or sound lest perchance twere lost not found in the opening of the rose dear to me is this reflection of a fair and far perfection shining through a veil undrawn ask no question then of fate yet a little longer wait in the beauty of the dawn through our mornings veiled and tender shines a day of golden splendor never yet fulfilled by day ah if love be made complete will it can it be so sweet as this ever sweet delay end of poem this recording is in the public domain a surmise by francis louisa bushnell read for LibriVox.org by bruce Kachuk. our mortal day breaks from the great unseen whither once more it darkly vanisheth two shadowy goals with faltering steps between oh tell me which is life and which is death nor is this but an idle questioning at every step we cross some dark surprise for life and death are what the moments bring and we must know them through their strange disguise joys we shall have that blossomed in the shade and griefs that out of sweetest dreams awoke doubts that grow clear and certainties that fade a weary crown a light and easy yoke wrongs we shall see made servants of the right the noblest victories won by those that fail great hearts that triumph falling in the fight death hand to hand with life behind the veil thus evermore we must our pathway thread mid lights that beckon shadows that dismay till the bewildered heart so strangely led wonders if life or death shall win the day as one might wonder waking from a swoon and seeing the far horizon half a light is it the morning broadening to the noon or is it evening sinking into night or as one standing on the silent shore if it be ebb or flow can scarcely guess whether the lesser flowing to the more or but the greater lapsing to the less o oh, shrouded mystery the baffled soul long coasting round thy solemn boundaries divines the rounded brightness of the whole that first must wane upon these mortal skies the tide when it lays bare the lonely strand but lifts more high the great mid-depths of sea does death work life does losing fill the hand does darkness feed the light that is to be oh then it is no longer life and death but life and life in ever circling light then ebb and flow of fortune or of breath are equal tides 
that lift us to our height. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of poems by Francis Louisa Bushnell.